a, a small game written in C, which I've extended to uh, be scriptable with Python. And you can actually write entire games in Python if you want. Um, but uh, for performance reasons, most games are written in C or C++, and you might want to just expose um, a little bit of the logic to be scriptable, or you can have almost the whole thing be scriptable if you wanted. So um, let's go down to something that is a bit more happy. So open door. Okay. So uh, when you open the door, so I'm just going to bring that up again. <clears throat> okay. So when I type open door, these are the things that's going to happen. So if I'm not close enough to the door, so this position test says, what is the position of the flag? And O0 means object 0, which is the flag. So if I stand over here and type open door, it'll say that you can't reach the door from here. Okay? So that's the old statement there. Um, if I go up to the door and then I try to open it, then it issues these series of statements. So it prints out a message on the screen. Uh, so these things here, this basically just says stop B player from currently walking. Set priority means um, put them in the foreground ahead of all other objects. So in these games you have a series of priorities and every pixel on the screen had a certain priority which basically represented how far in Z coordinates was it towards the player. So you could walk behind a tree or something and you would be partially obscured by a tree. So set priority means the player is displayed on top all the time. <coughs> Um, and um, then it will uh, uh, start the, the opening sequence. Now, I'm not exactly sure what the meaning of these flags are. One of the things, when you decompile code, you usually look, don't have the variable names uh, still because when you compile code, it basically just stores everything as, as numbers. And unless the information is stored in there, there's no way to tell what that was actually called in the original source code. So that's why when you decompile, it shows up as uh, F109. So, if we go to uh, label one, see what label one is. Okay, this find doesn't work very well. Label one, sorry? Uh, yes, I've, I've gone to a different room, but label one is is actually in this file somewhere, if I can find it. Here we go. Okay. So, um, all right. So the flag. So when it jumps to one, um, depending on the different settings of the variables, this will go to to a different uh, room. So that's um, presumably called if the doors are already open. Uh, and then that will take you into, into the new room. Um, <clears throat> so some of the other things you can script with this. Um, so you can control the display of objects. So uh, some of the commands, some of the view commands. Um, so when you say load view, that means load one of the sprites. So there's a list of sprite res resources in here. Um, and when you say load view, it means load the sprite with that particular number. Um, animate objects, so there's a series of objects on screen and each has a view associated with it and this just says um, display that on screen, um, put them in a different position, associate certain images with objects and so forth. And basically the, the whole game logic was written like this and then they would reuse the same game engine for writing a number of different games. So that was, that was what I spent most of first year doing because uh, when I was in first year, we didn't actually start programming until the second semester um, at Flinders. You guys are lucky here, you start in first semester. So I was kind of bored during first year and I wrote this. Um, another thing I, I, uh, uh, of interest is uh, another thing I wrote, um, which was an even simpler example of scripting. And
times in year 11, uh, we had an assignment in Australian Studies where we had to produce a presentation um, advertising Australia. And um, so, given that I was introduced to Mr. James Holland, I thought, well, what, I'll, I'll create an uh, electronic presentation on the computer. Now, these days, if you did that, you would probably use Flash, but I don't think Flash was around at the time. Um, so I wrote a, a very, very simple um, engine to basically script the, uh, the display that, that was necessary on the presentation. I'll show it to you. <coughs> uh, okay, so um, got some animation, you've got some speech bubbles that can pop up, um, you've got backgrounds you can display. Uh, and then, so one of the commands is you can have a menu command and you can ask the user to select something um, and then that will take you to another menu with a different background. So the, the, the controls of which background come up when you click what things are controlled by the script and also the set of menu options that are available are also controlled by the script. Um, so you can basically uh, navigate around the presentation and that would say, you know, who's speaking, what do they say when you start animation and stop animation and so forth. Um, I even had uh, audio in there. You get the idea. Um, so that's what I got up to in year 11. Um, and I'll just uh, show you the, the script for that um, so you can see how it's all actually controlled. So uh, just trying to remember what the file name was. Okay, here we go. So um, <coughs> here's uh, the commands that, that are available in, in the script. So um, you can uh, show or hide a person, you can um, set a person to say a particular piece of text, um, you can set um, a counter if you want to keep track of timing, for example, when you're playing a sound, bring up the menu, um, load music from different files, and, and things like that. And if we have a look at an example, here's the introduction. So uh, it uh, loads, walks in the tour. I'm not sure why that wasn't playing before, but um, probably didn't think it wasn't. Um, and then, you know, it just says to bring up different people and, and get them to say different things. And then you scroll down, uh, menu somewhere here. Here we go. So the menu command, uh, you would uh, specify how many options you have, and uh, you would list each of the options there on. You can also have labels as well. So this is a label to find, uh, and somewhere else there'll be a go to main menu. Uh, okay, so that's, that's an option on the menu. So you'd have the label and then the text that's associated with that label. And then when you click on that, that would actually go to the file. Now, the way that this was implemented was extremely simplistic in that basically it would just pass the text file reading line by line and it would say if um, the first 10 characters of this line are continuing in their left bracket then it would extract the parameters just using string operations um, and if you did a go to then it would go back to the start of the file and it would read lines again until it gets up to the label uh, that you want. So um, technically it is a scripting language but it's, it's very very simplistic. But, um, I guess it just goes to illustrate that you don't have to do a lot to get scripting in your game. Now, you can design your own scripting language or you can embed um, another one. And um, shortly I'm going to be talking about how you can embed um, Python in your program. So here's programmed in Python before. Python? Okay. Python's pretty cool. It's a very simple programming language. It's very easy to use. Um, <coughs> and so um, I've written a small game demo C um, and embedded Python into that, and I'll show you how to do it. But first of all, I'll just talk a bit about um, designing your own, uh, if you wanted to design your own language. Now, when I wrote this and when I wrote AGI Studio in first year, I didn't really know what I was doing in terms of, in terms of compilers. It was all done um, in a single pass with string manipulation operations, and um, looking back, I, I don't even know how it I managed to get it working. 